Hi, I'm Chris. I play Magic the Gathering. Hi, I'm Alyssa. I don't know what that is. In today's video, we will be going over Streets of New Capita, some of the art behind it and the real world inspirations behind the design of these cards. So with that, we'll get right to it. All right, so for this first card, we have Cormella Glamour Thief. So what can you tell us about this one? So if you look at the background, it's very stylized, and that's the style of Art Deco. Art Deco was a kind of style that um, became popular, sort of emerged in the United States around the 1920s, 1930s, and it's associated with geometric designs, straight lines, picture like the Chrysler Building. Uh, it's very you know, symmetrical, straight lines, rigid, but can also be kind of flowing, but it's, it's a distinct style. I may be able to have another example for you, but so there's that, and that's kind of what's behind her. And then she, if you think about it, her neck is freakishly long. If you look at like where her shoulder is and where her neck, <laughs> where her, her chin is, but, um, she's wearing what we would consider kind of what you picture when you think of a flapper from the 1920s. Flappers were just the cool girls from the 1920s. Very stylish, very happening. Um, and she's got a feather on her headband. And really, that's what you picture when you think of a flapper. But in the little bit of research that I've done, I haven't really found that many um, pictures of women from that time wearing uh, feathers on their heads. Usually it's from before that. And so the picture that I have is a picture of Lily uh, Elsie. She was a very famous actress in the early uh, 1900s. The picture's from about, I think, 19, either 1914 or 1918. And she has a feather on her head, on her headdress, uh, very similar to Cormella's. And hers is a decade earlier than what would be considered Art Deco. So I think over time, sort of our idea of stereotypical idea of flappers kind of merged different ideas into what we think of as certain things. Kind of how we picture, I don't know, like housewives of the 50s wearing aprons or something it may or may have not have been that popular, but that's kind of what we think of. Um, and she still looks fabulous. The end. All right, so next up we have the art card of Extravagant Replication. Uh, interesting design here. Lots of uh, lots of blue going on. Mm -hmm. There's a, what was that? Is that a tiger in the background? I'm, a tiger. I, I'm assuming you're not going to talk about the tiger, though. It's going to be something about this, uh, the the gloves and the dress, just the whole getup. Maybe the hairstyle? The hairstyle? I'm glad you brought that up. Okay, so in this one, her costume is beautiful depiction of a style of the 1920s sort of dress. Um, I will say the fit is more fitted. It's tighter than what was uh, in fashion in the 1920s. In the 1920s, as you can see in the picture I've got of Alice Joyce circa 1927, the silhouette is straight up and down. You know, no curves, just kind of straight, which kind of goes along with the Art Deco theme of straight lines and geometric designs. Um, and the lines on Alice Joyce's dress and the lines on extravagant replication magician lady are similar. So I thought that was cool. Um, so her getup, her hair, her dress, her gloves, maybe closer to the 1930s, because Art Deco was still going strong in the 1930s. And so hers with the, you know, she's very glamorous. And so I think it's leading more towards the 1930s. She looks fantastic. And I, and he's pictures of circus performers. So I looked up to see what kind of they were wearing in the circus during the 1920s. It all showed uh, female performers at the time wearing sort of what we would interpret as one piece swimsuits. So, but we're going to imagine that this lady, she's the leader of her own show, which is why she looks so, so awesome. Okay. So next up we have exhibition magician. What can you tell us about this? So I love this one because she looks fantastic. She's got the fur. She's got the feather. She's just glamorous and fantastic. And so her outfit, definitely looking at the silhouette, the dress is more fitted to her body, not straight up and down. So it's more of the 1930s style. Uh, the feather on her on her hat, as I mentioned for our first card, is more reminiscent of either costume or super fancy like 1910s aesthetic. And, ooh, her outfit made me think of the Ziegfeld Follies, which were dancers, entertainers uh, of the early 20th century. And 
she just looks fantastic. And so for comparison, I have a picture of Lucy Doreen circa 1922, because you can see the gorgeous uh, fur on either the overcoat uh, she's wearing, I think, and then kind of the deep V um, and you kind of get the kind of has the same vibe, I would say. So from the 20s into the 30s, uh, glamorous um, and fabulous. All right, now we have the art card for Venom Connoisseur. Yeah. Uh, lots of... The snake? Yes. It's a snake. Yes. Yeah. She's a Venom Connoisseur. Well, lots yeah, I, I mean... Uh, anyways, Venom Connoisseur. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, this is beautiful art. Um, with hers, her outfit again, like the one previous, like the magician, looks to be more 1930s um, inspired. Uh, with how fitted the dress is and the neckline. Um, but again, you know, there's not like a clear... People might think, oh, in 1929, they just stopped wearing short dresses. And then on January 1st, 1930, their dresses were long. That's not how that works. It's not how fashion works now. So it's not how it worked back then. So there were transitions. And hers, her gown is look cut, fitted. The headpiece, uh, again, appears closer to others I've seen um, from the 20s and 30s. And the, the picture I found that I like that kind of has the same aesthetic is of an actress, Miss Lily Demita. Um, and I want to say that's from the early 1920s, I think. I thought I had a year on here. Let's say she's in the 19, early 1920s. Um, her dress is still kind of fitted, you know, but she's an actress posing for publicity photos, posing for a movie. So they're always going to look a little more glamorous or stylized. They may not exactly reflect what people were wearing at the time. They have to just look fabulous. Um, but hers really kind of uh, struck me as, you know, kind of reminiscent of this design. So, I mean, these artists, I'm sure, poured over different photographs and different actresses and different designs from the Art Deco period and kind of just took what they liked and ran with it. And the last card that we will have in today's video, Fa Fabian? 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 Fabian, I would say. Fabian. Fabies. One more time. Fabian. Fabian. Boss is confident. Confidant. Mm -hmm. Fabian. Boss is confidant. There we go. Uh, so this is not a l lesson on pronunciation. This is a, uh, a video on fashion history. Yeah. So what do we have here? I mean, maybe she pronounces it Pahabine. You don't know. Um, let's see. Pull up. Yes. So Fabian is fantastic. She's clearly in, you know, the, the position of a therapist or a psychiatrist or something. And she's wearing trousers. She's wearing pants. Now, pants for women in Europe and America uh, weren't really acceptable until into the 1930s. Like, for instance, in the 1930s, the earlier, the later 20s, early 30s, they may have been acceptable, like at the beach, as like a beach pajama, beach pant, um, where things were a little more lax, a little more casual. But it was actresses like Marlene Dietrich and Katherine Hepburn that sort of brought trousers for women into, um, you know, uh, being put, I, I'd hesitate to say acceptable because it was still taboo for certain people but more visible and more um you know it's like these actresses are wearing it so it can't be that bad right so she's got her trousers she's got a little um her little cardigan fantastic headpiece with a little feather it's a little evening but fabian you know she wears it you know if she wants to wear feathers in the day she can go off and her shoes um are very cool clearly influenced by the 1930s fashions so she's ahead of the curve and she's very stylish as she does it so thank you all for watching. Uh, let us know in the comments which card explanation y'all enjoyed the most. And if you enjoyed this kind of content, we thought this was a kind of a unique idea. Let us know in the comments as well. Uh, if we get some good feedback, we will definitely do this again. You yeah. can include your own card suggestions, so on, so forth, so have you. Uh, but until then, y'all be nice to each other. And make good choices. And we'll see y'all next time. Bye.